Hello friends, welcome to TechWest channel. This is for the medical techs by your tech. In this video, we will discuss about Vidal test. What is a Vidal test? When to perform the Vidal test? How the Vidal antigens are prepared? Slide agglutination method, tube agglutination test, interpretation of the Vidal test, sensitivity of the Vidal test, correlation with patient's conditions. Vidal test is an antigen antibody agglutination test performed as slide method and also in tube method. Vidal test was discovered by Georges Fernard Vidal in 1896 when enteric bacteria infects humans Salmonella typhi, Salmonella paratyphi A, B and C. Specific antibodies are produced against the bacterial cell and the flagellum. The rise in the antibody titer in the patient serum is demonstrated during the different phase of the disease. When to perform the Vidal test? When the humans get infected by Salmonella typhi, Salmonella paratyphi A, B or C, the body starts producing antibodies against the bacterial antigens on the second week of the disease and the titer increases up to third to fourth week of the disease. When the typhoid is suspected, blood culture and bone marrow cultures can detect the presence of the enteric bacteria. Bone marrow cultures give better results than blood culture results in early stages of the disease. On the second week, the antibody titers rise and remain up to third or fourth week. The patient's stool sample will be positive on third week and in the fourth week, urine cultures will be positive if the patient is not treated. What are the antibodies are checked in Vidal test? Salmonella typhi O, that is somatic antibodies. Salmonella typhi H, antibodies, the flagella antibodies. Salmonella paratyphi A, H flagellar antibodies, Salmonella typhi B, H flagellar antibodies and Salmonella paratyphi C, H flagellar antibodies. The Salmonella typhi O somatic antigen used in the Vidal test cross react with other Salmonella paratyphi A, B and C. So individual somatic O antigens are not used for Salmonella, paratyphi A, B and C. Ideally, when the patient is having symptoms of enteric fever, the blood culture and the Vidal test is performed before starting the antibiotics. Antibiotics can suppress the growth of bacteria in blood culture. If the patient is in early stage of disease, the Vidal titer will be very low. The second Vidal sample is collected after a week during the second week of disease, the titer increases fourfold from the baseline titer that indicates the enteric fever infection. If the sample is collected on second week as baseline sample and the second sample is collected after a week, the titer remains the same or increase. Samples collected after third or fourth week of disease, there will be decrease in the titer as the antibody level starts decreasing. Antigen preparation. The antigens used in the test are the H and O antigens of the S typhi and the H antigens of Salmonella paratyphi A, B and C. The paratyphoid O antigens are not used as they cross react with the typhoid O antigens due to sharing by them of factor 12. The H flagellar antigen suspension is prepared by adding 0.1% formalin to a 24 hours broth culture or saline suspension of an agar culture. The O somatic antigen suspension is prepared by culturing the bacterium on phenol red that is 1 is to 800 when the salmonella are grown on agar containing phenol flagella are inhibited. The growth is scraped off in a small volume of saline. It is mixed with 20 times its volume of absolute alcohol heated at 40 to 60 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. Centrifuged and the deposit resuspended in saline for the appropriate density. Chloroform may be added as preservative. The strain used usually are the S typhi 901 O and H strains. 
slide screening method label the reaction circles as STO salmonella type O STH salmonella parate PAH SPBH SPCH positive control and the negative control place one drop of positive control onto a reaction circle labeled positive control place one drop of physiological saline labeled as negative control add one drop of serum in each other circles to be tested add, add one drop of appropriate antigen suspensions to the reaction circles containing patient serum positive control and the negative control mix the reagent and serum and spread over the entire circle using separate sticks rock the slide gently back and forth and observe the agglutination macroscopically at one minute all positive results in the slide test should be confirmed with the tube test to establish whether the titers are diagnostically significant or not tube method label five tubes of corn tube or test tubes and label them as sto12 sto5 label six corn tubes or test tubes and label them as sth126 label five tubes as spah and another five for spbh or spch whichever has showed positive in slide screening method. Pipette into tube number one of all sets of 0.9 ml of physiological saline to each of the remaining tubes add from two to five or six add 0.5 ml of physiological saline. To the first tube add 0.1 ml of patient serum and mix with pipette and transfer to the next tube of 0.5 ml and mix and transfer to the next tube and discard 0.5 ml from the last test tube. Repeat the same procedure to all the rows add 0.5 ml of appropriate antigen suspension to the entire row. Negative control is made with 0.5 ml of saline and 0.5 ml of antigen suspension. Cover the test tubes with cotton plugs and incubate at 37 degrees centigrade for overnight using water bath or incubator. Readings are taken on the next day morning. How to interpret the test results? Control tubes are checked for any agglutination. If agglutination is present, the test is invalid. There is a contamination in saline or antigen suspension. There should be no agglutination showing uniform turbidity of the suspension. Positive O agglutination is seen as a coarse, compact, complex granular agglutination with clear supernatant. H agglutination leads to a formation of loose cotton woolly clumps. Interpretation of viral test. The agglutination titer will depend on the stage of the disease. Agglutination usually appears by the end of first week so that blood taken earlier may give you a negative result. The titer increases steadily till the third or the fourth week. After that, it declines. Demonstration of the rise in the titer of antibodies by testing two or more serum sample is necessary. If the first sample is taken Late in the disease, a fall in the titer may be seen. The results of a single test should be interpreted with caution. Generally, titer of 1 in 100 or more of O agglutinins and 1 in 200 or more of H agglutinin is considered significant. Immunized individuals with TAB vaccine will generally have antibodies to S typhi S paratyphi A and B and C. When there is an infection, only infecting species antibodies will be seen. Persons had previous infections or immunization may show high titer and they decline after a week. If secondary infection occurs, the titer remains high after a week also. The bacterial suspensions used as antigens should be free from fimbriae. False positive results may occur if Fimbria is present. Other rapid serological test. The IDL tubelex test is a rapid immunochromatographic 
test detects IgM antibodies to STO. Advantages of this method is T cell dependent IgM responses target salmonella typhi O polysaccharide developed early in the illness. The typhi dot detects both IgM and IgG to 250 kilo Dalton outer membrane protein antigen of salmonella typhi. Due to the low sensitivity and specificity of the Vidal test, a fourfold increase in antibody titer within a gap of a week for the confirmation of typhoid fever is uh, evidence. Patients with malaria, dengue, malaria tuberculosis, endocarditis, chronic liver diseases, brucellosis can cross-react with the Vidal antigen and it can give a false positive Vidal reaction. Thanks for watching. Please share, comment and subscribe. Thank you.